Hello, this is part two of the lecture Resources Oriented Sanitation. Let's get into it. So we are now dealing with concepts and case studies for high tech. And uh, we will start with the system that was one of the first ones uh, that was built uh, of a system based on vacuum toilets. Uh, so that was a development that I did uh, around 25 years back. Um, and the idea was to collect uh, the black water separately with vacuum toilets. Those toilets you may know from the airplane, from um, trains and, and so on. Uh, but mainly they came from the development from, from the ships. And actually when we started to work on the system, we went to ships and talked to technicians and asked them how well the system works. And uh, then we were confident enough we could install these into uh, houses. And the system basically um, has a vacuum station uh, that's this unit here it's uh, around the height of a person this is a bio waste shredder what was made for producing bio waste and this mix was going into uh, sanitization and then to a digester that is here behind the wall and uh, this settlement was uh, designed for 250 people uh, and uh, the idea to produce a uh, liquid fertilizer that contains all the nutrients, low dilution through vacuum toilets. And um, that's something that uh, leaves you with gray water alone. The settlement only requires around 65 to 70 liters of water per capita a day. That's just half of the normal water consumption. So see how much the toilet flushing really does. And of course, the treatment of the gray water is a lot easier, a lot simpler. And in this case, we have uh, implemented uh, constructed wetlands, uh, vertical flow. So at the top of the system, there is uh, the distribution of the wastewater and it trickles down into the filter And then it comes out much cleaner and goes to receiving waters or could go for further processing for reuse. So some pictures from what we did. So that was the system that uh, we designed at that time. And uh, this here are drainage pipes in the bottom. Uh, then feeding pipes are put uh, above. Uh, they are under the gravel here, so you don't see them. And that would cause a vertical flow that is percolating through one meter of uh, fine gravel or coarse sand. And with that, there is a biofilm building up and that's treating the gray water pretty well. Um, this is a picture, so it's built directly beside the houses. There is no smell. It does, did work out also now of 20 years of operation. That still works very well. And uh, the water looks very clean after the treatment, um, even though gray water is really dirty at the beginning. But don't be mistaken, uh, when we made further analysis, we realized that there is still a lot of residues of household chemicals and stuff that we wouldn't really like to put into a river too. So further treatment would be uh, good. Um, and also uh, use of more eco-friendly household chemicals would be advisable. Uh, so my invention of the vacuum biogas system has spread to um, the Netherlands first and they have built one of such systems in Snakes, um, Snake uh, near Isle, Isle Lakes. And um, this is something what has really gone to scale in the Netherlands. They have uh, made a lot of um, progress in 
designing systems and now they have designed a big system for Hamburg. Uh, they are designing a very big system for Sweden. And that's good because uh, Germany was hostile towards me as a, a sort of pioneer, as, as a rebel in the scene. And uh, now the Dutch have really taken this up uh, and uh, they are marketing this now strongly. And as I said, I'm glad about this. When a country is not, not well, like seeing innovation, but fighting innovators, uh, then others should do it countries that are open-minded and that are supporting young people who are having uh, good ideas. We got some support, but basically it was not really taken up and the consequences of that were not seen at the time. Um, but nevertheless, uh, system spreads out and uh, China has done a lot of um, implementations. Um, also, the combination of uh, these uh, vacuum systems with urine diversion um, and uh, then also Hamburg Water has developed a very good further uh, concept from the vacuum biogas system, also uh, separating the black water in the houses. Um, and it would go to a biogas plant and in this case they are adding a lot of uh, grease from grease traps of the whole uh, area there and this is producing a lot of energy so that's a great idea and the system is uh, designed for around 2000 inhabitants start of operation was in 2020 and it's probably still the biggest one in the world of this type of uh, system, but the uh, city of Helsingborg in Sweden will soon take over because their system is even bigger than that. I'm glad that this is going on, that this is going to scale and that if you have an idea at, at, at a time, this can further develop. Later, I met somebody who had a similar idea, uh, Peter Jensen from Norway. Uh, he didn't do a digester, but a different treatment plant. But uh, also the idea was vacuum toilets for separating uh, black water systems. And it was great when we met a few years later and we had similar developments. Um, so um, the vacuum biogas system has a, a, a few downsides. So vacuum toilets still require uh, some water and um, so the mix is around uh, maybe nine liters black water for per person and day and uh, there was an invention done by Ulrich Braun and he has invented the black water loop system and that's uh, the idea is to have separate toilets so the black water is collected separately brought into a membrane bioreactor including nanofiltration and then uh, a clean water but mixed with um, basically with the all the nutrients you do nitrification so that the ammonia is not uh, becoming a nuisance and uh, this system is absolutely great we have developed this um, together with uh, Ulrich Braun at our institute at TOHH and um, if you find if you have this solution for the black water and as I said in the beginning separating toilet from the gray water is a key to water efficiency and then for the drinking water we can have a system where we process this from groundwater uh, it's used gray water treatment system MBR and then bringing it back into the groundwater and then water can be processed even with reverse osmosis at reasonable prices and we can can come to down to a very low freshwater demand of uh, 10 to 20 liters per person and day and uh, so that's something what uh, is very interesting so this is uh, the membrane bio a membrane bioreactor that we have built near Hauptbahnhof in Hamburg for a public toilet 
it's equivalent to 150 population equivalent and uh, it it is uh, working uh, and it's not operated anymore unfortunately because um, the uh, waste utility of Hamburg is not very interested in this topic so it's sort of idle but we can do further research there as well. Uh, this is the nanofiltration and this is needed to uh, remove the dyes from, um, from the black water because otherwise it would have a yellowish appearance and of course uh, that's not very attractive in a toilet bowl. But this works out and it's also further treatment and this system, the black water loop system, can also take out all the pharmaceutical residues, it can produce highly concentrated uh, dry crystalline uh, uh, nutrient uh, uh, powders <coughs> sorry and at the same time uh, the solids are separated and can be processed like terapeta to uh, compost for replenishing the humus the option would be to add uh, black water. Um, this is the insincorator that is very common in the US. Not good if it goes into the sewage system in my point of view, but that could be installed in a way that it would be feeding into the uh, black water loop system and uh, be treated with the rest of the compost. That would sort of take away a burden from urban housing areas because then the smelly bio waste collection would be um, taken away and this would be part of the blackwater loop system. Uh, so to conclude with this we can have buildings in inner cities even downtown areas where we don't uh, need a sewerage network. So that's Great news, isn't it? 80 to 90 percent of the all investment into wastewater systems goes into uh, the sewage systems alone, and they are not productive. As I said, it's transporting the water where it could be reused, and that would be in or around the houses, and it transports it to elsewhere where reuse is uh, very difficult, if not impossible, and so we can have waterworks in the basement, we can have a fertilizer factory included. So what we get into the house as food would be brought back as fertilizer back to the land, closing the loop, reuse instead of de depleting uh, fossil resources. Um, one restriction is there. So if we want to go to systems without sewerage, we need to infiltrate all rainwater because sewerage systems are also for um, taking the rainwater runoff. And um, if we don't have a sewerage system any, anyway anymore, we need to infiltrate. However, that's the more modern way anyway, so that's a good combination. So either simple swale systems or like uh, packages uh, below ground where um, the water can be stored after a rain event and uh, then having time to infiltrate into the ground um, and replenish the gr uh, groundwater. Many systems are there. Infiltration is possible even through roads, under roads, under buildings. And uh, so that would be also replenishing the groundwater enough uh, so that it can be reused in the um, system, it's, uh, in, in the buildings um, themselves. All right, and that would really make this um, closing the loop uh, instead of polluting water and dumping everything into the oceans, we can make a full reuse in 
several ways as, I, as I've shown you. We have low-tech options, we do have high-tech options. My personal uh, opinion with having 30 years of intensive experience in this field around the world, different countries, high-tech, low-tech, built systems, inventive systems, talk to many, many people in the field. And in my opinion, the Blackwater Loop system is um, a great system for high-tech, for downtown areas. Um, it requires around uh, maybe two, three, four, five thousand 5,000 people to be connected to one system to be economic. Uh, and um, on the other hand, it is fertilizer factory water processing plant inside the city can have income generated and uh, can also recover energy from water as i'll show in a minute uh, and uh, the system is free of patents today because ulrich braun has unfortunately deceased three years back and uh, now this system is uh, available for uh, implementation and we will be happy to advise anybody who is interested to further develop this. It can go a long way, I, I, I'm sure about that. And uh, the other system that is very suitable is the Terrapeta sanitation, the container toilet. Please have a look at the animation that is found in YouTube under Terrapeta sanitation. You can put my name, Ralph Otterpol, uh, but you should find it anyway. And uh, that three minute animation shows how well that can work. And we have done all the calculations for uh, city areas, for multi story houses. Very cheap, uh, technically not too complex, uh, but it's not available yet. And we need a first installation of maybe three, four, five thousand uh, houses uh, that production is starting. We, we do have a, a chicken and hen problem at the moment. So without a chicken, we don't get an egg. And without an egg, we don't get a chicken. Um, all right. So finally, uh, a little bit about um, sanitation and energy. And uh, the topic of energy and water and reducing wastewater production should always start with the shower head and uh, there is uh, some few models of shower heads that's the one i have in my own bathroom since maybe 15 years works fantastic and uh, it can save a lot of water and energy because instead of the usual 18 liters it only uses six liters per minute just put a bucket under your shower and see how fast this is filling up with this shower i did the same it's not really filling up all that fast and uh, i can save around 200 euro per person and here in my household if i implement this in mainly in energy savings but also partly of less water consumption so why is this not everywhere i don't know sometime there was an initiative of eu to make these shower heads compulsory it was withdrawn for whatever reason so that's crazy uh, but the fact is that only very few models are doing a good job and so that's the one i have is the the bubble rain system a vortex system that is swirling the water and a pleasant shower because the uh, water bubble that is coming out is filled with air so it feels like a lot of water and it's a nice shower still doesn't use much all right that's one point that should be everywhere uh, then uh, you must look at hygiene because if some of these water saving shower heads are making a mist that is dangerous to health because you can inhale legionella uh, then another thing where sanitation and um, energy meet would be if we go for terapeuta sanitation uh, i told you that we would add uh, charcoal uh, to the compost and for that 
we could combine that with with wood gas technology uh, wood gas technology is the most and probably only sustainable way of bioenergy when it comes to producing biofuels in the field not talking about producing energy from waste that needs to be treated anyway or, or things like that like uh, all these things of biogas from food uh, bioethanol from food this is crazy in a world where one billion people is starving and that number will go up so uh, wood gas can go a long way because that can also come from food trees from agroforestry and so on and the systems don't only produce power heat but also charcoal and um, this is something where we have a nice combination where the nutrients can be used to produce energy again and part of that the the, the powdery part of the charcoal can go into the composting process there's also small units the sterling a very small small sterling unit and uh, this unit here uh, this is working with normal gas but it could be converted to wood gas with some effort and uh, this is the noah stove loam stove uh, that is the low-tech side of um, well wood gas application families can cook their meals and earn money with that and that's very very important for poor countries uh, so if you bring in sanitation bring in wood gas technology at the same time and together that can make a real good system also with the terra soil improvement um, then energy from warm water we do have a lot of heat in um, the warm water and we can use less warm water that's the shower head i showed you heat heat recovery near the source we could put in biogas production by usb uasb upflow anaerobic sludge blanket reactors uh, developed in the netherlands and also the biofuel cells they don't go go to scale really it's a good idea but it doesn't seem to work out very well uh, urine has a energy equivalent of uh, 10 kilowatt hours per one kilogram of nitrogen and we could also produce biogas from excreta uh, and uh, that's something where we have some energy options i'll show you some technology for that <clears throat> so we have done also some studies on um, the available temperatures in the wastewater so uh, obviously shower is relatively warm the gray water in total is pretty warm um, dishwasher hot water and uh, water recovery uh, heat recovery is available and the easiest is the shower even though it's not the highest energy level but the warm water flows at the same time where hot water demand is in place so we recover some of the heat from the shower and this is like mixing with the water supply so the mix of the bows uh, makes water that is a lot warmer than the cold water that's coming in and it can save around 50 percent of the heat bill from showers and that's not a small thing uh, this is the detail company high tech in um, in Belgium other companies have joined in but they were really early and they made this so the water goes down in, into the shower and the heat of the water is taken out uh, in in this unit so the black water loop system can also make uh, the warm water heat recovery so we can have a a heat exchanger and that could actually uh, compensate for some of the 
additional energy that is needed for the membrane. Bioreactor processes, uh, what is one of the downsides of the system, it requires some more energy, but it ma makes water far cleaner and that should be worth it. And if you recover some heat from the gray water, what you couldn't do when there is central sewage systems with strong winters, the, the systems would freeze, uh, then you could regain a lot more energy than you would put into the system itself. All right, and then finally, um, as a closing remark for the whole lecture, uh, there would be a combination of water and food supply from rural areas. The, so the systems in the city would be recycling systems. They would produce fertilizer, soil fodder, and that could be going back into agriculture. Uh, the idea that I presented would be new town development where around the city this fertilizer is uh, used and soil is um, replenished. This fertilizer from human excreta should go into industrial crops, preferably into reforestation, not onto human food directly, but uh, it can, after like 10 years, that can be used again, because then we have a breakdown of all the pathogens and also the other issues we have with that would be gone by then. And uh, so that would be something uh, that goes into this direction so that we do not go into uh, like destruction of the soil and uh, with that we would ultimately destroy our planet but to go into a life of abundance replenishing the soil and making a good future for all on a green planet. And um, part of that, as I've shown in this lecture, would be clothing the loop on sanitation. It is urgently needed in the long run. It's just a question of when sanity will return to sanitation. Uh, because with all the resources running out, that will be catastrophe. And the earlier we come to reuse systems, the less people will have to die of hunger, of drought, of water scarcity, and so on. And uh, this is visible already. We have a hell of a, a situation in many parts of the world, and this is absolutely unacceptable. The lack of proper sanitation for around 1 billion people around the world is unacceptable. It is so easy to avoid that, to bring in systems. I've shown you some of the solutions. More solutions are available, of course. And it's a tragedy that humankind is so low in its development that we really don't uh, get into this. Uh, but at least there are a, a few million pilot projects of different types. And uh, I'm positive that we are getting uh, somewhere to a society that is uh, caring for a good future and not just sort of accepting the, well, possible destruction of humankind. And uh, with that, I want to conclude. We are in systems thinking, resources-oriented sanitation is part of that. And um, one thing is getting the global mass flows right. You've learned concepts and case studies, low-tech and high-tech, and we've dealt a little bit with sanitation and energy. With this, I want to thank you for your attention and, uh, well, get involved get such systems going and uh, if you're um, interested in working in this field uh, there are master thesis available doctorates and uh, there are projects going on you can join in many ways and contribute to a good future for all thank you bye bye